right, it's time to begin our service tonight. Why don't we stand on our feet? Let's open up the service of prayer by going before the Lord and asking Him to have His way in this service tonight. Loving God, we come before you, God, and as we do, God, we enter into your presence with our hearts and our hands and our voices uplifted to you, God, ready to worship you, ready to give you all the glory and all the honor. God, for you truly are worthy of them all. God, you're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the honor. You're worthy of our love. For your love wherewith you love us. God, have your way tonight is our desire in this service, in our hearts and in our lives. Moved by your spirit. And we'll give you all the glory and all of the honor in the wonderful and glorious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause tonight. God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. We can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Why? Because that's what it's all about. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Let's sing that song. He keeps me singing. Or you can follow along on the screen. It doesn't matter. As long as we sing together. Amen. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord together in His presence. Well, there's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace, be still. In all life's ebb and flow. Well, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. He fills my every singing as I go. Rightfully by your side. God, have your way tonight in this service. 
and we'll give you all the glory and all the honor in the wonderful and glorious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause tonight. God is good. Greatly, greatly, greatly is He to be praised. Amen. God is so wonderfully good to us. Amen. Amen. All right. You may be seated this evening. It's good to be back in God's house and I'd like to make a few announcements and uh, one of them of course is uh, my wife and I will be leaving tomorrow morning uh, to be uh, heading to the camp to head to the camp to be there as long as it takes to clean it uh, clean it all and get it all ready for the conference uh, coming up on the last Monday of this month and uh, so pray for our travels and then um, uh, also like to remind you about the service on Wednesday night Reverend uh, Berg, uh, Reverend uh, 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 Vasquez <laughs> Brain cramp is scheduled to be preaching, and uh, I told him tonight you're scheduled as long as nothing changes and whatever, and he's fine with that, and and so pray for him. And then I have not yet asked Reverend Berger if he wants to lead service, and uh, but I'm asking him now, and so probably he'll be leading service and uh, and pray for the services and everything. And then I got a phone call from Pastor Olson today, and uh, and I wasn't sure when I saw uh, you know how it was going to go and whatever, but. Uh, he was pretty excited. Uh, there was an update given last night. It was last night, and uh, uh, she was not able to come off the ventilator, and they were talking about the tracheotomy and everything, but today, today things changed. And as Regina just wrote about maybe 45 minutes ago, today is the miracle day that they have been praying for. She is completely off of the ventilator. All right, she is COVID-free. All right, she doesn't even need, uh, she has a little bit of oxygen flow. She doesn't need the CPAP or the B, whatever, C, but she doesn't even need that. Uh, she doesn't need, she just needs a little, and, and, and she is very, very much aware. And so, uh, you know, the devil wants to play this down, but you think about it. She has been intubated for almost a month, almost a month. And there were uh, quite a few uh, numbers of time where, it was well, the whole time really until just recently it was life-threatening and so uh, we and Pastor Olson shared uh, with us uh, uh, thanksgiving for all of your prayers and all of your concern and uh, and so it is a good day now I, I wrote him I, I, I wrote him a text because he called me uh, twice and the second time he called me I, I did not receive the message I did not hear the phone I was up here getting ready for service and uh, and that's when he left me a message letting me know that you know, they had just taken her off the ventilator for good. And, uh, and so I, I wrote back and I said, I said, sir, we are praying that God's angels will build a wall. Of because the devil would love nothing more to re than to reverse all this stuff. And so uh, we want to uh, pray a wall of protection round about her because she is still vulnerable. She's still in a very weak uh, condition, all right, physically, but spiritually uh, God's able to keep his hand upon her. So keep praying for her until the day she comes home. She comes home to be with her family, to be with her husband, to be with her daughter, to be with her granddaughter, to enjoy many, many, many more days together in this life, showing the world that God really is still in control. Amen. And I'm not just saying that because uh, I was reading the other, heard the other day, about this person and that person who lost their battle with COVID, uh, who were, were basically in the same condition that she was in, but perhaps the difference was, uh, and maybe, and I'm not, I'm not, I, I want to be careful here uh, to be very tender, but you know, not everybody believes like we believe. There are people who they don't believe in God and they won't pray for their family members, and so their family members are left all alone. Uh, to science and the doctors and, and, and that's good and fine but there's only so much that science and medicine can do and the doctors and I'm not trying to belittle them at all you know what I'm saying All right, but to know that there are people praying for you is a real blessing amen and so Pastor Olson uh, you know he was, he, was, he was very excited and, uh, and rightfully so and again he wants to thank you for your prayers and your concern for uh, his wife and their situation. Amen. At this time, uh, no further uh, announcements other than God is good. Amen. 
We'd like to wait upon you for the Sunday night budget offering and tithe. All Christians do pay tithe and gladly and cheerfully give in the offering. Tonight's tithing offering does go to meet the financial needs of the house and the work of the Lord here in Belleville. It really is a blessing and a privilege and an honor, number one, to be able to pay our tithe and to give God an offering. Amen. Tonight's tithing offering does go to meet the financial needs of the house and the work of the Lord here uh, in Belleville. And we do appreciate your faithfulness to uh, those two things, paying your tithe and giving an offering unto the Lord, because it's through your faithfulness that, that God is able to continue doing the work uh, that he has for us to do here in Belleville. Amen. Brother Lockhart, sir, would you please pray over the gift and the giver and ask the Lord's blessings at this time. Amen and amen. Of course, and if you'd like to give online, you can do so by going to www.myntcc.org forward slash Belleville Hill. And don't forget the IL at the end of Belleville. That will take you to our, our website where you can make a gift to the church here. And uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Remember, you're not giving as unto a man. You're not giving to enrich a man, but you're giving it as unto the Lord. Amen. We're just going to go right into the Bible reading. Got one verse of scripture to read to you tonight. Found in Philippians 14, uh, 14 and 13, right? Chapter 14 and verse 13. Or 4 and 13. It's 4 and 13, right? There's only, uh, I think, four chapters in Philippians anyway. So, and uh, uh, maybe I need to slow my speech down, right? You know, when you're excited, you, you just kind of get, uh, right, ramped up, so. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And I want to speak to you tonight on the title, Together We Can. Together We Can. Reverend Berger, so would you please stand and pray over the message and the messenger tonight. Together we can. And as we uh, as we look at as we look at our life and um, uh, perhaps and especially really especially since we've come to know the Lord, looking back, there's some things that we now know, we now understand. Things like we without Christ were destitute of strength. You know, you could be strong physically speaking, but morally speaking and spiritually speaking, uh, destitute of strength. And so we without Christ were at one time destitute of strength. We without Christ were also dead in trespasses and sins. That's why... Uh, we didn't know God. That's why it was impossible for us to hear God. Whenever we heard the Bible as sinners, we uh, kind of uh, 
uh, mocked it. We, you know, we, uh, you know, we, we didn't know what to believe because uh, we were spiritually discerned. In other words, uh, we were spiritually dead, and the Word of God didn't mean anything to us. And we, with or without Christ, even today, have no power that we can call our own. With or without Christ, we have no power that we can call our own. For in him, that is, as Paul says, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. In me and in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And Jesus said, Without him, we can do nothing. But with him, what a difference it is altogether. Amen. Together with him, we can. We can do a lot of things together with him. Number one, we can receive of his fullness. We can receive of his fullness. The Bible says... For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. What this means is that all of the grand totality of deity resided in Christ. It pleased the Father that in Christ all the totality of deity dwelt. And all of this grand totality of deity did not dwell in him as a transient guest, but as a permanent abiding presence. Who can fathom the depths of this subject? But in the marvelous person of Jesus, there is combined all of the fullness of humanity as well as the fullness of divinity. There is therefore in him and in us a fullness of wisdom to keep us from error. As long as we are in him and he is in us, because of the fullness of, of God that is in him, the fullness that is in him, the fullness of, and we're going we're gonna to kind of, a number or, or letter out a few things that uh, this fullness means. All the fullness of God. Remember now, uh, the what the uh, the uh, the wisdom of man, the foolishness of God, or the uh, is the full uh, is the wi wisdom of man, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? My wife is uh, shaking her head. You know, the wisdom of man is the full whatever. So all right, you know, and when you when you don't when you don't kind of. Uh, but anyways, don't get me off on that. Don't 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 make me don't make me blush and turn red and 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 make it seem like I don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? But in Him, all the fullness of God dwells. All the fullness of what? All of the fullness of God's wisdom. What is the fullness of God's wisdom? Remember when when uh, God uh, finally got Job's attention. Job, for a while, uh, in his situation, began to uh, exalt himself. And finally, one day, one day after God said, enough of this, enough of this, it's time to really show uh, uh, Job what's going on. It's time for me to get Job's attention. He said, where were you when I laid the foundation of the world? He asked Job, he said, hey, tell me, tell me where the four corners of them are. Now, God knows where those corners are. God knows where uh, the first part of his creation, the first part, the first uh, little dot or whatever, you know, when, a, when, a, when a, uh, an artist is drawing a picture, they start not with the, the, the fullness of the picture, but they start by putting, first of all, a dot what do you mean by a dot? Now let me just let me just kind of illustrate what I'm because I've never really done any artwork, you know what I'm saying? But you know, you gotta have a starting point. 
and it, it's right there where you put your, your pencil or your paintbrush or whatever that you are first starting your piece of art with. It's right there. That's the beginning. God knows the beginning point of his creation. He knows where the four corners are. His wisdom is far greater than all the wisdom of man. And so in Christ dwelt all the fullness of uh, God's wisdom. And the good news tonight is that in him, if we are in him and he's in us, then that fullness of wisdom can dwell in us also. And it is the wisdom of God that keeps us from error. Amen. It's the wisdom of God that keeps us from wandering astray and becoming lost in a lost world. We don't have to worry as long as our eyes are kept on him. We don't have to worry about ever being lost because he is not lost. Amen. He knows exactly where he is and where he is right now is he is seated at the right hand of the throne of God and he knows how to get from there to here. Why? Because he came from there to here and he left from here to go back. To, he knows how to get us from where we are to where he is. Amen. And as long as we are in him and he's in us, then we are safe. Together we can. Amen. Together we can do a lot of things. Amen. Together uh, in him there is not only the fullness of wisdom, but there is the fullness of grace. Of God's grace. Man, thank God for the unmerited, undeserved favor of God. Thank God for what God wants to bestow upon us. And what God wants to bestow upon us is his mercy and his grace. Remember, the Bible says that we are to enter boldly into the throne room of God's grace. Amen. That we might find what? Help in our time, our hour of need. God wants to bestow upon us all of his mercy and all of his grace in him should all the fullness of, gra of God's grace dwell. And if we are in him and he is in us, then all of the fullness of God's grace ought to dwell in our heart and in our life. And man, this ought to be the cause of our rejoicing. Amen. This ought to be the, the cause of our liberty to lift up our hands and, and shout with all of our heart and all of our voice a, a great big thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace of Almighty God that brought it all down to man. Amen. In him, there, not only is there the fullness of wisdom to keep us from error and the fullness of God's grace to keep us from uh, falling away from God, but there is also the fullness of joy to keep us from despair. Amen. I'm not sinking down in despair tonight. I'm not sinking down in depression. I'm standing in the liberty wherein Christ makes us free. And I'm standing tonight in the strength of, of God's joy. For his joy is our strength. Amen. His joy is an unending joy. It's not like the joy of this world that come and go. His joy is permanent. All we have to do is let his joy have his fullness or have his fullness in our life. Amen. And so in him, there is the fullness of power. Not only is there the fullness of, uh, of, of wisdom to keep us from error and the fullness of of God's grace to keep us from falling away and the fullness of joy to keep us from despair. In him there is the fullness of power to protect us from the adversary. As we were praying tonight after I heard Reverend Olson, I, I prayed, I said, God, God send your angels down to camp round about Sister Olson. I said, and rebuke the adversary who would love nothing more than to reverse everything that you have done in her heart and in her life. And that really...
really is the devil's desire is to reverse the work that God has began in all of our lives. But I'm glad tonight that in Christ dwells all of the fullness of the power of God to protect us from the evil one. Amen. I'm not afraid of the devil tonight. Why? Because I got a great big brother and his name is Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil and destroy them he did when he rose triumphant on that third day he rose up from the grave he is the one who was dead and yet he is alive forevermore and he held in his hands the keys of death and hell and the grave and none of us have to go to those places why because Jesus went for us amen Just as it pleased the Father that in him should all of this fullness dwell. It is also pleasing to God that you and I receive of that fullness. It pleases God. That's God's desire. God's desire is that we would receive of this fullness. The Bible says, and of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace John chapter 1 and verse 16 together with him uh, we are number one or number two strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man I'm not just an ordinary man you're not just if you are saved tonight uh, you're not just ordinary you are extraordinary why because uh, there's someone in you uh, there's someone abiding in your heart uh, that makes the difference uh, Jesus Christ in you uh, is the hope of glory uh, Jesus Christ in you uh, is the making of uh, that new man that new creature uh, oh things are the old man the old uh, a man with his sinful thoughts and sinful ideas uh, and infern uh, uh, infern uh, in, in, <laughs> infern thinking you know what I'm saying infern meaning uh, inferior that's what I meant to say inferior I knew I wasn't getting it right inferior way of thinking you know we are what we think about right we are the sum total of our thoughts so when you say you can't, you're absolutely right. I can't do it. I can't be this. I can't be that. Like I said this morning, why say you can't when you, say, when you can say you can? I can't be this. I can't be that. I can be everything God says I can be. My life can be everything that God says it can be. My life, my life says I, I, uh, God says that I am triumphant. I can be triumphant in all things. God says in his word that I am more than a conqueror. God says in his word that I can do all things through Christ. Which What is there that I can't do if my hand is in his hand? If my life is in him and he's in us? Peter, in the boat that night, just like everybody else in the boat was afraid. They were afraid of dying. They were afraid of being lost in the darkness out there on that body of water that wasn't their friend. And their fear was amplified when all of a sudden in the middle of the darkness, in the middle of the storm, there appeared a ghost-like image. Now that's what they thought it was, but it wasn't a ghost-like image. It was Jesus himself going to them in the darkest hour and the most fearful hour of their life going right to where they were telling them to what? be of good cheer don't be afraid it is I and Peter said Lord if it be thou bid me come to thee walking on the water you know how do I know Jesus that it really is you you know sometimes the other night I was out, I got home last night, and uh, it was dark, and I took the dogs out to the pasture, and I let them run, and while I was out there, I saw this thing go flying by. I said, what was that? You know, the twilight zone, you know what I'm saying? And, and the fears of men and, and what you think in the dark, you know what I'm saying? And, and, uh, <laughs> and I thought, and I said, what do I have to be afraid of? You know what I'm saying? So I'm, you know, but but still, you know, you you 
you know, these are, these are how uh, horror stories come about, right? These are how the fears of men are amplified because, you know, their mind wanders. Man, what was that? And, and so then your, <laughs> your heart and mind is filled with all kinds of wonder. I wonder what that was. Is it friend or is it foe? Is it going to hurt me or is it going to help me? And of course, of course, uh, you know, our thoughts think it's going to hurt us. And so, you know, the, the, the blood pressure goes up a little bit and the heart begins to beat faster. And that flight mechanism begins to kick in. And, and what you want to do is uh, you want to call, call the dog. Hey, uh, Wendy, uh, Joe, come on, man, let's go so I can get in the house where there's safety. You know what I'm saying? My wife is in the house. There's safety. Yeah, my, see, my wife, she was in. Man doesn't like being alone, you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not good for man to dwell alone, you know what I'm saying? That's why God gave us a wife, you know what I'm saying? All right. What? Just some kind of, uh, the, the neighbors were out, and so it might have been something that passed by their light and cast a shadow, and what, I don't know what it was. It wasn't, no, it, it was something up in the air. I did see it was something up in the air. <laughs> Ooh. You know, it's like, it's like that old story. And when the north wind begins to blow and it, and it, and it blows and it, you know, so, so powerful that it causes the windows to kind of to squeak. And, you know, you can hear the air passing through the windows, especially if your house is older, you know, older being uh, built back in the 1800s, you know what I'm saying, where there wasn't a lot of ceiling uh, ceiling, S E A L I N G, ceiling. You know, where they're sealed up, and the and the cold wind blows, and that north wind blows, and 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 you hear, Woo, you know, and 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 the the, the thing that I'm after here is where, uh, in the moral compass, there was this there was this uh, 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 little statement where, as the north wind blows, and and ask who has been bad, the north wind would say. You, 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 you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and so, you know. <laughs> All right, let me finish. <laughs> Enough of my, my joke telling, right? Go back to the preaching. Go back to the outline, Pastor. You do better on the outline. All right, very good. With him, together with him, we are strengthened with might. By his spirit in the inner man. The Bible says that God. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might. In his spirit in the inner man. It is he who gives us both to will and to do. It's God that gives us something good to do with our life. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13 for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Aren't you glad tonight that you can do of his good pleasure? Amen. Meaning tonight that you can do what he wants you to do. Well, I don't have to do what the devil wants me to do anymore. I don't have to do what the world wants me to do anymore. I can do what he wants me to do. Amen. And what he wants us to do is far greater and far better. And the rewards are far richer than all of the rewards of this world. Amen. Because the rewards of God are eternal. And they are filled with his presence. And in his presence there is that what? That fullness of joy that can never be taken. That can never be dissipated. That can never be negated. Uh, that can never dwindle and dwell away. In him there is fullness of joy forevermore. Amen. And I'm glad tonight to be able to do his will. To do what he wants us to do. To say what he wants us to say. To live the way he wants us to live. Uh, to share uh, with our fellow man. Of uh, what he wants us to share with them. And what he wants us to share with them. Is his goodness. And his mercy. And his grace. And his love. And his joy. And his peace. And his strength. 
He wants us to tell our fellow brothers and sisters uh, uh, in, human, in the human experience uh, that you too uh, can do all things uh, through Christ uh, which strengtheneth you because he strengthened me. I know what we can do in him because he's in me and, and, and I'm in him and what a blessed life it really is. Amen. It is he who gives us both to will and to do. If we are strong in any degree, it is in the Lord and in the power of his might. For the Bible says that we are to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Man, I'm glad that God gives us that right. It's almost a command, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Before you go outside the house, strengthen yourself in the Lord. Before you go outside in the, of your house, in other words, before you go out into the world, strengthen yourself in the power of his might. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. And how do we do it? We do it by telling ourselves, I'm in him and he's in me. If God be for us, who can be against us? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Speak the word of God. In order to speak it, you've got to know it, though. You know what I'm saying? You've got to believe it. Yes, thank you. You've got to believe it. Yeah. You're not going to speak it if you don't believe it. In other words, what you're going to say, the Bible says I can do all that. I can't even tie my shoes right. Look at my shoes. I looked at my shoes and I said, man, I need to polish these things. And they're looking pretty unpolished. Who has time to polish your shoes, you know what I'm saying? Well, we ought to polish our shoes. We ought to look nice. We ought to look professional. I am a professional. Professional what? I want to be a professional. I want to be a professional Christian. I want to be the best Christian man I can be. I want to be the best example of a Christian for all the world to see. Now that's a good, that's a good uh, a goal to set. That's a good target to aim at. If I'm going to be anything, let me be like him. Let me set my eyes on him. Let me get my eyes up off this world. I don't want a statue of myself. You know, for for uh, uh, the next generation to ooh in awe at and say, what did he do to do that? To be, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not I'm not finding fault with those that have statues made after them, but uh, none of them have have attained to the life that Jesus lived. Now I know that there are statues of of supposedly what Jesus looked like, but they don't they're, they're no replica of him at all. You know, we prove it. The Bible says that uh, his appearance wasn't one that we would desire. We don't know what he looked. He might have been short and fat. You know what I'm saying? I know one thing. He didn't have long hair. I know another thing. He wasn't white. He was a Jew. And they're olive in color. And it was the tradition of Jews that the men had short hair. Unless they were under a Nazarite vow. But Jesus wasn't a Nazarite. Now he was from Nazarene. Nazareth. <laughs> he was a Nazarene. But he, he did not have to make the Nazarite vow because... Uh, <laughs> He didn't have to do that. He just lived for God. He made it his lifelong ambition to serve God. To do always those things that please God. You know what I'm saying? And so, and once the Nazarite vow was over, uh, then they were to cut off the hair. Right? And they were to offer it up to God in the fire. 
Now that was a stinky offering. You know, you know I, what, do you, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, when hair burns, it doesn't smell very good. It's kind of like people who burn their trash and all the plastic and everything. And, and uh, no, all right, I'm just having fun. Let me go on. All right. Whatever we do, we can and must give him the glory saying, I live, yet not I. I live, yet not I. It is Christ that liveth in me. It's Christ that liveth in me. What I do now, I do what? To the glory of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. By God's grace, I am what I am today. Thank God I'm not what I used to be. You know, I have... They're going to put their listening on. Yeah. I have brothers. Yeah. And I love them. Hi, Danny. David. Mom. I have a sister who I love very much and she may not believe it because we don't, we don't call each other every day and every night. But every do, time we do talk, we do tell each other that we love, we love one another. You know? But I'm glad, I am glad for the day I left home because I may not be doing what I'm doing now had I not left home. I'm not finding fault with anybody. I'm just glad for the day because it was, it was in my loneliness, <laughs> far away from home, far away from mom and far away from dad, that I began to look outside of myself for help because I realized I realized I was a mess and the only way I was going to get my life straightened out the only way I was going to uh, get out of the hole that I was in I had to get to God and I'm glad that as I made my way to him he did not slam the door shut in my face that's not his, that's not his uh, 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 mode of operation. He's not in the door shutting business except for the door of our past. He wants to close completely and open up unto us a door of a brand new, bright, and glorious future. Together with him, my final point is we can do all things. We can do all things. Through Christ which strengthens me. It is in Christ and in Christ alone that we receive all that we need or all that we stand in need of. It's in Christ and Christ alone that we receive all that we stand in need of. What is our need tonight? Some people say, I need more money. Well, join the crowd. All of us probably need a little bit more money. You know what I'm saying? But you make more money and the government's going to take it from you. They want to keep taxing you more and more and more and more. My aunt was told, she, she went to work, she said, uh, their bookkeeper said, I don't know why you're working. You're, you're working to only pay taxes. They were doing better with her not working because I guess her husband made so much money that it put him in such a high tax bracket that, uh, you know, the only reason she was working was to pay taxes. So she came off the job, you know what I'm saying? But our greatest need is not more money. Our greatest need is that which money cannot buy. Our greatest need is to be in him. Our greatest need is the knowledge 
of knowing that we are in him. Our greatest need tonight is perhaps salvation. If you're here and you're not saved, if you're not saved, your greatest need is salvation. Salvation is the need of all men. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All right? If more power is your need, Jesus is the one who can give you more power. He is the one that is able to give us all that we stand in need of tonight. I need a new job. Well, pray. God's able to get you a good job. You know what I'm saying? That's right, I've been praying, but well, don't, don't, don't ever give up. It's always too soon to quit, right? Tonight, as we begin to close, we've endeavored to preach to you together we can. Together we can. We can what? Together, uh, we can receive of his fullness. Together, uh, we can be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. In other words, in other words tonight, I don't have to listen to the thoughts that, that, that are not of God that uh, try to penetrate my mind. You know, goofy thoughts. What kind of goofy thoughts are they? Well, just think. There are, there are some thoughts that, 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 that want to tell you that it's no use. It's no use for even trying. It's no use to, to try to make things better. Where did that thought come from? That didn't come from God. It didn't even come from you. I guarantee you it didn't come from you. It came from your adversary who wants to exalt his word over God's word who wants to keep you bound in his image in his desire for your life and that is you know to be everything less than what you can be and so tonight we don't have to listen to that dude I'm loved tonight God loves me he knows my name and that would be an excellent song to sing tonight, but we're not ready to sing it. He knows my name. He knows all about me. And he's preparing a place for me. These are the things that we can tell ourselves that we have in him. I'm not inferior. God made me. Now, you may think I'm inferior, sir, ma'am, but God doesn't think that way about me. You know what I'm saying? What am I doing? I'm illustrating how to fight these battles, these thoughts, these lies of Satan that want to bring us down and, 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 and disfigure us. You know what I'm saying? God wants us standing tall. We don't have to be stooped over. Woe is me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, if you're on a horse and that horse is running and, and you know, you want to tell him to stop, you say, whoa. I said, whoa, whoa. And if that horse don't stop, you better find hope. Uh, Hope and pray he, he runs by a, a, a lake or something so you could jump off into the water. You know what I'm saying? All right. That was just for fun. Tonight, tonight, together we can. Tonight, when you place your hand in his hand, all things become possible. Tonight, when you place your life in his, in his hand, all things are possible unto you. Tonight as you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to God. Father, we endeavor to preach that which we feel you laid upon our heart. So preach to them tonight. God, we're asking you at this time, God, to finish the work that you began. Finish the work that you began by dealing with their hearts.
God, you know our every need. You, you know what we have need of even before we ask it or think it. And so tonight, God, I'm asking you to meet that need in each and every one of our hearts here tonight. Give us more of you. Give us more of your fullness, more of your joy, more of your love, more of your strength. Strengthen us with might in the inner, with your might in our inner man. Have your way tonight. Accomplish your will in the wonderful and glorious name of Jesus. Let's find a place to pray for just a little while. For just a little while, let's spend a little season in prayer. Let God know that what he has need or has for our life is what we want. Let him know tonight, God, I want what you want for my life. Have your way tonight. Accomplish your will. In Jesus' name.
thank God that together with him, we can. We can do, well, let me ask you a question. What is there that we can't do in him? You know what I'm saying? I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now I'm not going to go jump off a bridge and pretend like I'm the falcon or I'm Superman and, uh, and expect God to uphold me. Jesus even told the devil who, who said, cast thyself down and his angels will. He said, it's written, don't tempt the Lord thy God. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be stupid. God didn't tell me to jump off that. Now, if God told me to jump off that, now it's a preacher. Well, how do you know it wasn't God that told you? Because God won't tell you to jump off the bridge. All right. Now, the devil will tell you to do it. And then he will lie to you. Say, I'm God. Do it. You know what I'm saying? All right. Have a good day tomorrow, folks. Have a good day each and every day till we'll see you again. Wednesday night, be the will of the Lord. We should be back. Hopefully, we'll be back. And uh, if not, then Reverend Vasquez is going to preach you happy. All right. And if he doesn't, then let me know. And no, I'm just having fun. All right. Pray for Reverend Vasquez. Be a second time preaching here. And, uh, you know, he's a professional now. No, and I don't think he thinks that at all. You know what I'm saying? He probably is saying, Lord, help me. All right. And uh, he, he knows. And, and that's, that's, a good, that's a good place to be. So pray for him. Pray for my wife and I. Pray for Sister Olson's continued recovery. And uh, now I don't think we're going to see her in conference, all right? That would be a, a real blessing. But I don't think that we're going to see her in conference. I'll pray for her and just really just, just give God all of the thanks and the glory that belongs to him, all right? And, and not only that, not only that, pray for those doctors that helped her, all right? That God would would really help them in their work too, all right? Because they took good care of her. They took good care of her, all right? And, and so together, together, working together, they do in their part, we do in our part, God do in his part. Look what happens, you know what I'm saying? Together, we can. God bless you. We love you folks, all right? We'll be praying. You pray for us, and we will see you whenever we see you. All right. It's been good to be in God's house. Sister Utoria, Sister, will you please stand, pray, dismiss us in prayer. Once she's through praying, you may consider yourself dismissed. Go in the love of God. Let the love of God go with you tonight. God bless you.